you want to use SQL Plus with the IMSSO token to access the database. Well, SQL Plus doesn't contact IAM directly, so it needs a helper tool, uh, in this case OCI command line uh, interface tool, the CLI, to get the uh, DB token um, for the API key, the API key representing the user. And then the OCI CLI will put the DB token in a default file location. And when SQL Plus logs in with a slash login, it'll be able to pick up the uh, DB token, send it to the autonomous database. The autonomous database will verify the DB token and then get groups for the rest of the authorization uh, and have uh, the user access the, uh, the database. So let's take a look at these steps individually. First, if you're, especially if you're a new OCI user, make sure you are verified. You've got your OCI invitation email. Use the one-time password to change the password, and you're all set. And you, as long as you don't see pending verification in your user uh, profile, you're good to go. All right, so this, uh, the OCI CLI, it has a great document uh, to get this installed and configured. The, in fact, I just cut and pasted it from there. Uh, the quick start guide is uh, at this link here. You can Google that as well. And then follow the Linux download. Remember, we, all we have is uh, Linux at this point. Uh, I'll look for more in the future. Uh, install and verify uh, the CLI. And then you got to set up the CLI and then you get the DB token, the, the, the database token. There's different instructions for Linux 8, Linux 7. Uh, the same command to install the CLI and then you can just run OCI uh, space dash dash version just to make sure it's installed correctly. Alright, for setting it up uh, you need to make sure uh, you get some things ahead of time. Get your tenancy and user OSITs. That's the Oracle Cloud identifier from your console. When you log into your OCI console you'll see the user profile button at the top right and uh, two links to tenancy and user settings. Uh, you need to go into that to get those uh, uh, Oracle uh, Cloud identifier numbers. Here's the one for uh, tenancy. Go ahead and just hit the copy button uh, for the OSID. And for uh, the user settings, it's your user page, or your profile page, and hit the copy button to get the OSID. And put these in a location that you can access uh, when you're configuring the OCI CLI. All right, the CLI has its own setup. You just say OCI setup config. Just use the default value, especially if this is your first time creating your uh, just a default config file and then uh, install the API key. It'll ask you if you want to uh, set up an API key. Just uh, go ahead and accept that. Uh, it's going to ask you to uh, pick the region. Make sure you pick the correct region, one that you're subscribed to. It doesn't necessarily have to be your home region and add the API key public key back to the OCI user console. Alright, and that's again, go back to your, your user page in the profile at the console. API keys is under resources on the left side. Pay, and pick the paste public key option. You get a big box and then uh, when you get the public key, go ahead and paste it in there and add it. All that information is uh, it will be available to you when you uh, install and configure the uh, CLI. Okay, now that you've uh, you've added it, time to get the database token using your API key. That's the default uh, for uh, the CLI. It'll automatically, uh, if you don't specify anything else, just work. Uh, it'll use your API key that you set up. And since we don't specify any particular config file or profile, it'll just use the default config default um, uh, profile and you say OCI IAM DB token get. Now the response is interesting. Uh, it tells you exactly where the private key is written at. And uh, this is the uh, default since we didn't uh, specify anything different. And the DB token is written at this particular location. And tells you the validity date, uh, date and time for the uh, DB token. Installing SQL Plus uh, with the instant client uh, remember, just uh, for Linux at this point uh, in the wallet, uh, use the same instructions that you have today with the current autonomous database instructions uh, to do this. Uh, just make sure you use the latest, absolute latest 19.13 uh, Linux SQL Plus 
and the instant client. If you got it from a few months ago, please get the latest one uh, uh, from first week in December, or second week in December, that time frame. Uh, make sure it's uh, the very latest. It has the uh, the updates to work with the tokens. The uh, 21C is not updated this time, so stick with the 1913 uh, uh, clients at this time. And they can use the existing steps for SQL Plus to the Tonos database, download the wallet, unzip it. And the same things to update the SQL that not Aura file and the TNS admin environment variable. Now, to tell your instant client to pick up the database token from the file location, you need to add the token auth equals OCI token. So that goes into your connect string. You can put it in a SQL that, that, that aura, uh, but in general, because you may have different uh, databases that, that are IAM uh, connected and other ones that aren't, you probably want to put in your connect string. And so here's an example of putting into your uh, uh, connect string in the security uh, area. And then use the slash login. If you uh, put your IAM username and password, it'll go through the password verifier process, not the token based. You use slash, it'll look at the uh, the new parameter and go pick up the database token. You can use the connect string or the name of the connect string. Uh, either one will work. Okay, let's get to the demo. Okay, we're in our uh, uh, Linux environment and you can see the uh, uh, I've got a, window, a terminal window on the left, and that's already preloaded with my OCI CLI command to get the DB token. I want to do a demo, so I want to have a fresh token for this demo, so I'm going to go ahead and get that. And you can see the information, the keys and tokens are written in a particular location and the validity of the token. Okay, now let's go into the SQL Plus environment. And the first uh, login, you can see it's a slash with uh, the full connect string. Um, and at the very end, in the security area, I put the token auth equals OCI token. I'm going to go ahead and log in with that. I'll get access and it shows that I'm connected. I can also put it inside TNS uh, names.aura. And uh, it'll connect as well. Now, let's take a look at some of the uh, more interesting things of uh, what's in user env. So let's see what the current user is. Again, this is this user is mapped to uh, is, is a member of a IAM group that is mapped to this shared schema. This shared schema is called user shared, and that's what shows up under current user, not the IAM username. And I'll look at the session roles for this user, and it's mapped to a uh, global role that's mapped that is mapped to a group that the user is a member of and this is a, a senior DBA global role. Now let's take a look at the authenticated identity who this user is and it shows up as the name of the user uh, the username uh, I am username um, now the enterprise identity is more interesting and that shows the uh, OSID for the user, the Oracle um, Cloud Identity. Uh, and we can see the authentication method. So in uh, the other uh, one with the password showed password global. This one is token global. So it's with a directory, but it's using tokens. And network protocol. TCPS, the client uh, connection to the database has to be uh, TLS. Uh, for this to work, it'll give you an error if it is not set up with TLS. It could be one way or two way. And this last one is the uh, identification type. And just like with the other uh, demo on the password uh, verifier video, it shows global shared because we're using a shared schema mapping, whereas the shared, uh, the uh, global uh, schema is mapped to a group in IAM.